What is going on, everybody? Kyle here, and I've got my good buddy Blake Sammons with me this morning. How are What's you doing, up? Blake? I'm good, man. How are you? Doing good, doing good. We got a lot of people already jumping into the stream here this morning. It's funny, I can see a little ticker count as many people are checking in, and it was like zero, and then it was like boom, 20. I'm like, all right, nice. Uh, it's good to see everybody this morning. I think this is a, uh, a pretty timely topic. Um, I just emailed it out to uh, my list and I've gotten a lot of people responding like, I'll be there, I'll be there. Or if they can't be here, they're like, is the replay going to be available? So I know a lot of people are going to like about uh, like what we're talking about today, Blake, uh, which is the four lead sources um, that basically we're targeting. I'm targeting, Blake is targeting, um, you know, moving forward kind of in this crazy new environment uh that we're seeing here uh today yeah. and uh, lots of uh you know changes lots of opportunity though um and so i mean we're not going to go deep on mindset i mean i talk a lot about that but of course like anytime we have markets like this you know i think you know one of the most important things that you have to be aware of is your mindset and uh, and so none of what Blake and I will talk about with these lead sources will matter if you're kind of already negative or if you're thinking like, oh, this stinks or whatever. Um, so definitely uh, there is opportunity. I got started in 08. So this is you're almost 15 for me, Blake, kind of crazy. Um, but 08 was a crazy market in and of itself for the whole next oh, yeah. like, three years, Absolutely. right? Like 08 to 11. Yeah, and, uh, and here I was a new agent. So if it's like, if I can figure it out, I promise you, everybody can figure it out. It just takes determination. Um, so, but all right, we got a lot of people tuning in. Let's see real quick. Um, if you guys are tuning in where you're coming from, go ahead and hit me in the comments with where you are at right now. And let me know how the market's going uh, near you. What are, what are you seeing? What's your mindset like? Uh, we got... Brent Walgren's tuning in. What's up, guys? Good morning. Good morning to you, Brent. Good to see you on the stream. And uh, also, we've got some exciting, we got an exciting announcement to make at the end of this call, don't we, Blake? Uh, sure I think do, we got some, some pretty cool stuff coming out. And something That's that right. uh, maybe- Get excited, maybe, stick around. Yeah, yeah. Something that, I mean, you look at Blake's shirt and you look at my hat, something might look a little uh, different here. So, <laughs> and his koozie, look at that. Even, I love it. That's right, bro. I love it. All right, we got uh, B Wood from Houston. All right, nice. fellow Texan, what's up? Safe town, what's up? <laughs> we got Priya from San Antonio. All yeah. right, good to nice. see you on the Houston. stream. Cool, love it, love nice. it. And for those who don't know, I'm in Charleston, South Carolina. I know that Kyle is uh, in Texas as well. So it looks like we got a nice little spread of people over here. We do, we do. And if you don't know, like we've, you know, Blake's been on the call a couple of times, but if this is your first time seeing Blake, um, you know, one of the cool things about Blake and I is I've known Blake since like high school. So he was from San Antonio. He right. moved out to Charleston. He had like an entire new life that like I didn't even know for a while where he was a teacher <laughs> in education for like, you know, a decade. And yeah. then, you know, here in the last, you know, couple of years, has transitioned his career uh, from teaching and education um, into real estate. And he's become not just any real estate agent, he's like a super successful real estate agent. He's super humble. So like, I've got to do the bragging on his behalf. <laughs> Um, but literally like I, you know, I get to partner with him. So I see what he's doing. I see his deals and all this stuff. And literally in two years, he's, uh, what's called going to, he's going to be an icon at our brokerage. I already know it, um, with how many transactions he's doing. And that's a huge accomplishment. And, uh, but also you just have a great heart for people. Um, I know not only for your clients, but also, you know, for other fellow agents and, sure. um, so that's. Uh, a really cool deal yeah but um but Thank yeah and so but he's, works, man. he's got an amazing brand too that's the one thing i was going to talk about is like if you look up blake look up aloha charleston you'll see he's got an amazing brand and uh so it's something we can all strive for yeah. but uh but that being said we got a lot of people now i think they're ready to rock and roll hey, what's up hawaii i see you what's up aloha <laughs> you see that yeah we got denise she's from philly we got uh Elias, uh, Elias, 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 Elias. What'd you say? Elias. All right. From, uh, El yep. From Hawaii. Love it. Uh, we got, who else we got in here? Caroline from New Hampshire. 
We got Love Cali it. in the house. We got, yeah, we got everybody. All, every, cool. all the U.S. Uh, is showing up. I haven't seen an international one yet. Let's see. We've got Dennis from Seattle. Nobody internationally yet. I guess uh, uh, Hawaii is probably the farthest right now. So sure. Uh, right. Thanks for <laughs> oh, joining. Oh, here we in. go. Here we go. We got it. We got an international. Uh, Grand Prairie, Alberta, Canada. I love it. Good to see you, Alex. Nice. All right. Cool. We got St. Louis in the house. All right. Cool. Well, cool. Let's cover these four lead sources, Blake. Uh, so we kind of broke this up. So Blake's going to kind of primarily focus on two, and I'm going to kind of cover two. Um, they're all four together, an amazing lead source right now, even in the current market. Um, but and here's the thing that I'll say a caveat before you go out and start doing all four of these. We're not do, saying this to say like, go out and do all four of these lead sources. If you, you know, because that might be a bit overwhelming, but I think for to finish this year up and as you're starting to business plan for next year, you know, if you're already finding some success, maybe add one of these if you're not already doing it. Um, if you're just a new agent and you're not doing any of these, maybe pick one or two to become an expert in it to do, but don't just go out there. If you, especially if you're not doing any of these right now and say, I'm going to do all four of these, because that would be a recipe for disaster. And, uh, and we don't want you to, to fail before you even get started. So great um, advice. Great yeah. Advice. So and if you are doing one of these things, maybe there's something that we're doing that maybe you can expand on or a little bit, um, or maybe you have some, if we're doing one of these type of lead generations, then and you're doing it, you can pop in the comments what you're doing to make it different in your neck of the woods too. So I, I love that advice. Yeah. All right. Well, Blake, do you want to take the first one or shall I take the first training here? Uh, man, I will jump right in here. Um, <laughs> I love it. Take action. <laughs> All right, Blake. Well, what um, is going to be your first lead source that you're looking at to finish this year strong and go into next year with? Yeah. So I, uh, to be honest, uh, I've been adding in Google PPC to my life and, um, if I'm being 100% transparent, I've had to kind of pause some of my Google PPC just for the current moment because I've had an overwhelming amount of buyer traffic coming into my website. And if you're working those leads like you should work those leads, it takes time, effort, follow up, and a lot of communication, a lot of appointments, a lot of consultations, a, a lot of showings, right? But um, I've had a lot of good success with Google PPC and I've, I've closed a healthy uh, amount of volume from that for a low investment. So I think that it's been a extremely good uh, source for me for, for new leads, um, but they're qualified, they're good and they're good hearted people and they typically follow up with a solid uh, review, which I'll kind of piggyback on to my next point of why I brought that up. Yeah, no, that's huge, guys. You know, here we are. I mean, obviously, you know, where we're where where we're at right now is interest rates have increased. We all know that, right? Like, there's no kind of skirting around that fact. I know, you know, a lot of us were trying to do our best with just kind of let buyers know, you know, that hey, you know, it'll be okay. Interest rates have been this way before. You know, whatever our script is, our messaging is right now. There's no. Um, you know, there's no getting around the fact that there's probably less buyers today um, than there were six months ago, nine months yeah. ago. Um, but that doesn't mean that there's no buyers. There are plenty of buyers still out there and there will still be plenty of homes that get sold between now and next year, right? Yep. Um, but who's uh, gonna be the one that capitalizes and can go find those buyers? And one of the amazing ways, as Blake just said, is Google PPC. Now, what I've seen, because I actually, you know, have campaigns up for myself, I also have been, uh, you know, seeing some campaigns from other fellow agents, are that lead costs have gone up um, a little bit on uh, on PPC campaigns, but like we're not talking where it's like, you know, now it's not a good deal to do it or anything like that. Like I think if you're not in PPC and it's something like you're like, oh, well, you know, I've thought about it, maybe I want to do it. Now is still a fantastic time. So like for just to give you an example. You know, my average PPC cost per lead was about $15. And now I'm starting to see it get up into like 18 to 20, you know, but it's still not like, oh my gosh, you know, I can't keep my business going because it's gone up. Um, but that's just, I think what has kind of happened. But I think that's a good kind of like way to relate it to people to let you know that, yeah, maybe things are changing, but that doesn't mean you just throw your hands up in the air and say like, well, nothing works anymore. No, I mean, like you have to adjust and things, you know, but there's still going to be buyers out there. Yeah, absolutely. And, 
And, and so, just yeah. to expand on that, I saw uh, looks like Juan commented in there. Uh, PPC is a pay per click. Oh, hey, somebody answered them. Look yes. at you guys. Way to go. This is community. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, um, you know, one of those things where, like, the way, and I'll, I'll explain PPC pay per click even more in general. Like, if you go onto Google and you search for anything, you know, typically what's going to happen is those first three results. Um, sometimes it's four even in some cases are going to, you'll see it either says like ad or sponsored, you know, buy it basically. And that just means that somebody is paying an advertisement to show up first on Google. Right. And, um, and so versus below that, when they're not ads, those are like organic, right? Like that's SEO search engine optimization. That's getting those there. But usually when it comes to something like you know, the searches you're going to want to rank for, which in this case, like I'll give you a whole scenario. Somebody goes to Google and they search homes for sale in 78260, which is like a zip code by me. You want to show up first, right? Like, cause like, that's what Zillow, that's what realtor.com, that's what the big boys, that's what they're doing. And then they're getting those leads and they're selling them back to us as agents. But you can skirt that whole process by paying a company or learning how to do Google pay-per-click yourself and basically having like an IDX website. Uh, I know guys, we're going really deep quick. IDX is uh, internet data exchange, basically saying like your website can search for properties, right? So like, let's, let's say you have a website that can search for properties. You don't have to, it is one of the best ways, but you don't have to. There are other ways where you can set up landing pages and capture leads that way. But let's just say you have an IDX website you basically would then take that uh, that Google PPC ad where somebody's searching homes for sale in 78260 and they click on it because yours is first and most people are going to click the first thing on Google and then they get sent to your website and then literally, you know, they're going to be presented the homes that are for sale in 78260. And so that's, you know, the whole kind of idea behind it. Then as they're on your site, looking at homes for sale in 78260, they might look at one property, then two property. And on that second property, your website has a lead capture form that gets their information and you can start to work that lead. So that's kind of like the general kind of basis behind what Google PPC is, because here's the problem. A lot of people will have real estate websites and they'll be like, well, I've got a website, but I don't get any leads from it. Well, yeah, you're not going to get leads from it if you don't have traffic, right? Yeah. You need if you're to not have... working on your SEO or you don't have a funnel, like a sales funnel that directly leads to it or through it, uh, then yeah, you're, you're definitely not doing yourself a favor just by having a really cool looking website, right? R and I, right. I say that from personal experience. So Exactly. So, you know, you got to have some traffic, right? And most people, especially when you're just getting started, you just have your, your beginning website, you're not going to be getting SEO traffic, right? And so you're going to have to usually pay for traffic. And, uh, and so Google PPC in that sense um, can certainly be good you can, there's a couple ways, like I said, you can get, uh, you can start going down the Google PPC route and Blake, I'll ask you kind of your experience with it, but you know, you can number one, pay a company to set up and kind of manage your campaigns for you, which if you don't know what you're doing and you're not the kind that like is real techie and likes to kind of get your hands dirty with all that kind of stuff, probably the way you should go, uh, you're going to pay not only your ad spend, but then you're going to also probably spend like a management cost. Um, most companies, the way they do it is they'll have like a minimum spend and they'll say like, okay, you know, our minimum spend is $500 per month and we take a 40% management fee, right? So then that means out of that $500 a month, they're going to take $200 to manage the campaigns for you. But then the other 300 is going to go towards the actual campaigns uh, on Google, right? And so that's kind of how most agencies are set up. And there's a lot of different ones that you can um, pay to do this for you. The other way is you can start to learn PPC and kind of manage it yourself. Um, and, you know, or maybe you're already doing that. And that's what I've done for years. I, I mean, obviously, you're going to get the lowest cost per lead doing that. But you're mm -hmm. also going to have to invest your time to do it. So, you know, you're trading your time for, you know, for, for money. Right. And so yeah. it's just what you leverage, want. leverage, for leverage. Yeah. I said, the only thing that, that, um, additional is, is sometimes that money is also used to kind of track the data on like your ads that is being spent. So like if, if you're heavy into analytics and want some of those stats, like then you might want, uh, just some of that additional information, but I, I chose a route that was like going to spend more in ad heavy source. So that way I was getting more leads 
um, you know, for the, the spend that I was, I was giving. So, yeah. So now let's talk about the process. Like, let's say you're sold on Google PPC and you're like, all right, like I want to do this. What does that look like? Blake, like you signed up for Google PPC, like what, yeah. what changed in your business day one? Like, what did you do with it? And then like, what started happening and what was the process from there oh, on out? Yeah. All right. You want me to open the, the book of secrets here? Yeah. Um, all right. Yeah. So first of all, Make sure you have a solid campaign before you even venture into Google PPC or whatsoever. Make sure you have a solid plan for like, hey, when you're out at a showing, when you are doing different things in your life, um, when you're at the doctor with your kids, like, do you have a plan set in place that your website's going to be working for you to be able to deliver value in the absence of you, right? And then you have to be able to follow through on those calls. So like a lead comes in, call them day one, uh, follow up with the text message later on, then call them day two, day three, day four, day five. And then on day six, do you quit? No, you call them again. Day seven, day eight, you call them, right? And you're probably, they're probably gonna pick up at day eight and be like, gosh, you just don't give up. And you're like, you're absolutely right. I certainly do not. Um, so <laughs> what changed, I, it's, it's a process, it's a procedure. It's not just like, I'm gonna click and turn this on. You have to put things in place to manage uh, your time and you have to have a clearly defined like lead generation time block that you stick to and make sure that you follow up with these leads that you're paying for. Because I learned real quick that I missed one uh, on a Saturday or Sunday, I was making an excuse and I said, I was out with the family or whatever. And I said, you know, I'll just call it tomorrow. I called them on Monday and they had already registered on somebody else's website and said, I already met an agent. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You got to be speed to lead is key with buyers and follow up is key with buyer leads, you know, but in this market, you know, I think especially cause we've been in the, the market where getting listings was like gold and it's still i mean getting listings is always going to be gold but it was especially gold like you got a listing here in the last couple of years like that was pretty much like guaranteed money you're going to close that deal like it's oh, yeah. happening right and uh, but now we're starting to see a shift right and i think we're going to see more equilibrium as we come you know to these you know next year or so where if you have a buyer it almost might be looked at like how it was having a listing back, right? Like where it's like, Hey, I got a buyer now. We got some power here, right? Mm -hmm. So building your business moving forward to go after buyers and to build it, you know, more buyer heavy, it, it's not a bad thing. And Blake and I were actually talking earlier before this call about just in general, working with buyers versus working with sellers. You also, you know, may prefer you like working with buyers, right? Yeah. And this is a, a, a solid way to get into it. Yeah, you have to invest money, right, to, to get with Google pay per click. But usually, especially if you're working these leads right, if you have a, you know, desire to work with buyers, you're going to want to work these leads right. You're going to have a positive return on investment, right? Yep. Um, because like, here's here's just a quick like math calculation of kind of how it usually works is what I've found with my Google pay per click is my conversion ratio is usually around one out of 20 to one out of 25, right? So four to 5%. That's like really good though. So, I mean, there's, there's definitely, you know, if you're just getting started with it, you know, and you're kind of like refining your craft. I also have worked where I've got like inside sales department, stuff like that to, you know, they're calling on my behalf. So I'm not missing anything to get those numbers. But if you're getting two to 3% conversion ratio, that's, you know, probably what I would say is average to maybe slightly just below average a little bit. But like, even if we took that number and we just said one out of 50 leads, right, is what you're going to convert on on your uh, Google PPC. Um, and if your average cost per lead, let's say is 15 or let's just go ahead and say it was $20. If you took you 50 leads at $20 to get a closing at that point, it's cost you $1,000 for the closing. But as we all know, commissions are a lot more than a thousand dollars typically, right? And so, you know, you sell a three hundred thousand dollar home, that's potentially nine grand. Even if you split that with your brokerage, you know, whatever your split is, you're still going to be positive on your return on investment. Um, and so, you know, granted, we're talking in large numbers here, guys. So that's the one thing I'll, I'll kind of caveat and say is not only do you need to have make sure that you have this budget but make sure you give yourself enough runway to extend that budget out for like six months, 12 months, because you may not close them right away, right? So you're gonna spend a good amount of money before you close them. Um, they are still relatively quick closings because 
the intentionality behind a Google pay-per-click lead is usually pretty good. It's somebody who's going to Google and actively searching like homes for sale in this zip code. You know, they're usually pretty high up there versus like if you do like a Facebook ad and sometimes they get lumped together. People are like, oh, I've done online leads and they've just done Facebook leads. That's different, right? That's like interruption. You're just scrolling their feed. You, they may be registered, but they probably weren't super interested because you just kind of interrupted them. And maybe it was an eye catchy ad, yeah. but like they didn't have the intent to, to go out there and actually do the, uh, you know, to do the searching. So, exactly. yeah, so I think that's important to, to point out um, is that, yeah, it still can close it, but make sure that if you're going to do this lead source, you've, you've planned for it for a while. You can, you know, if you're spending 500 bucks a month, make sure you've earmarked three grand. So that's like, Hey, I'm doing this for the next six months. You know, I know how it's going to be. I'm going to spend that money and I know it's going to come back at some point. Right. And that's kind of the mentality you need to have with it. Yeah. But um, there's a couple different, I have saw a couple people uh, asking about um, uh, specific uh, companies that do this for you. So mm -hmm. I know real geeks is a good one. You can check out real geeks. Um, Why Lopo is another good one that you can check out. And then Blake actually used inside real estate, if I'm not mistaken, right? Uh, yeah, I was just about to say inside real estate. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the one Blake used um, because that's actually uh, part of what's included with our, our brokerage, uh, KV Core. That's another name for their uh, for their company is inside real estate. And uh, they actually do pay-per-click within their their offering there. It's a oh, yeah. separate add-on, but they they will do it for you. So that's another thing is check with your brokerage, check with, you know, whatever CRM maybe that you're using already. Maybe they have already a thing that ties in, um, you know, that you can kind of, kind of make, uh, make use of. So it's super easy too. Yep. So yep. yeah, cool. All right. Um, let's see. Are there, uh, Priya says, are Ooh. there ways to boost... Uh, SEO organically. With yes. Can I, can, yeah, I, can I tackle this one first? Yes. 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 Um, I hope I'm saying your name right. Is it Priya? Priya? I hope I'm saying your name right. Um, I, uh, a blog. Blog is a great way for you to kind of uh, boost some of your organic growth with KV Core because you can uh, write in there, type different things, different experiences, different um you know, different activities that you're doing or just write about your life as a realtor. And when you're doing that, you're increasing your search engine optimization because you're essentially making keywords almost hashtag like. So like, for example, um, you know, when I'm typing, I, I will literally type my experiences. So I do like a, what I call like a realtor reflection. And it's just more or less just like me reflecting on my craft as a realtor and kind of growing. And I write down my different experiences that I've had. And when I write down words like Charleston or South Carolina, like those are now coming up as like uh, linked words, like a hyperlink. And so like there I'm increasing my SEO just by purely a having an active website, B having that text on my website and associated. And then, um, you know, when I put up pictures in there too, it, it really helps because it just shows an active website that's moving. So I hope that helps. What, what, what would you add on to that, Kyle? Yeah, no, I think you nailed it on the head. I mean, that's pretty, you know, I would say as far as SEO, it's, you know, it is a more long-term game. So knowing that, that you're adding value, you know, in, um, you know, over, over a period of time and it eventually will rank. And then the more that you do, the more that it ranks. So it's almost like an exponential thing. Uh, but once you get that ball rolling and, and you kind of get on that train that where Google starts to show you some love um, organically, it's a great train to be on. Right. And so, um, but yeah, I mean, adding in, especially, I mean, with, with KV core, you already have um, the opportunity to add a blog. You have all this kind of stuff. The one caveat that I'll say is if you are going to start like doing stuff where you're going to try and rank it organically, just make sure that you go with um, your own branded domain, your own custom domain. Oh, and um, point. Yeah, Great. because, it, because you know, to, to rank things organically is going to take either money and time or both. And, you know, uh, you want to own what you have, right? Whereas if you are just put it, you know, still use the KV core site, but you can host it on your own domain. That way, if something ever happens and you want to either get rid of KV core or you move out of the brokerage and go, you know, go to a different brokerage, um, you don't lose all of what you built up organically. You can actually keep what you own. So I think that's a, that's an important thing. And you can do that with KV core. They actually have a thing. It is extra. You got to go out and buy your own domain name and you got to, you know, pay their like uh, company to kind of like host it on it, but it's, it's not very much. It. But it's 
highly. So, um, all right, let's move on to the next one. So we've got three more to cover. So I know we, uh, we spent some time on that one, but that is a good one. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead. I think these other ones, maybe we won't go too in depth, but we definitely will still talk a lot about them. Um, but one of the next ones I want to talk about, of course, is near and dear to my heart is of course, YouTube, right? Uh, what is YouTube? Right. (laughs) And, uh, and so we're going to, yeah, I think it's, it's proven now at this point, right? Like YouTube is a force to be reckoned with when it comes to real estate leads. And, um, there's not like, I I don't think it's as like weird anymore, like that people are getting success from running the business on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's just one of those things where, uh, I think even more so into the future, like, like right now specifically and into the next, you know, year to two years, educating people, explaining things out. Um, the, the, the realtors who do a very good job at that are going to be the ones that win, right? Like, I feel like, um, you, you know, like in the past, if you were an excellent marketer, like if you were, you know, keen on, you know, just like you had a good look, you had a good brand, you had all this, you know, you could do very well and you still will do well and you still need to do that stuff. But I think more so now than ever, like people are turning to video there. You're building trust with your yes. video. And that is so key to kind of like getting things going. And there's a lot of people too. The nice thing about, about YouTube specifically is that, you know, you are eliminating a lot of competition because people will dabble in it and they'll say they want to do it. But the people that do it very well or that are, you know, um, consistent with it, you know, it's very few and far between. So like, you know, you have a huge opportunity to set yourself apart with YouTube, right? Whereas like, you know, most people can, you know, go out there and start a brand and kind of like look like they're doing a lot without, you know, necessarily doing a lot on a lot of these other platforms. Yeah. But like, it's really hard to like do a lot on YouTube without actually doing the work, right? Yeah, like, yeah. like YouTube does take work and, uh, you know, and so it's, it's, a it's a labor of love, I will say. I mean, if you're going to do it, you're going to make sure that you, uh, you know, like doing it because there's going to be a lot of times on YouTube where you're just like burnt out or you're like, it's hard to get started. But uh, if you're passionate about it and you like are like researching what other realtors are doing about it, what other topics they're creating in their, you know, markets and stuff like that, um, it, it's endless. Like you could yeah. go on forever. You and, know? and let me chime in here because yeah. like you're not going to brag on yourself. So I'm going to brag on you. Like, uh, I, I think one of the things that you guys is really important is like being authentic to kind of reach beyond your sphere of influence with YouTube. So it kind of gets you known beyond where you're from. Right. And like, I've known Kyle for 20 years and like Kyle, this is Kyle. So like, not only is this the real Kyle now, but this is the real Kyle in the videos. So I think being authentic and kind of piggybacking on what Kyle just said is like, you can't really fake it on YouTube. So like find a way to make a niche, stand out, be different, but be you. Don't pretend to be something that you're not and do it on YouTube. It'll go further. And I think that's why Kyle's had such a huge success because he's leading with uh, his heart, but he's also putting himself out there. So like you really do have to be authentic. So kudos to you, my friend. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where, um, you know, I, I look at it as like a scalability tool. Like, you know, this is who I am and, and you know, but if I was only doing this one on, because I, I've done this for many years, but just one-on-one, I could never scale that to as big of a business as I've built today. And that's all in part because of YouTube now, you know what I mean? Like, like I'm not any different than what I've been these last 10, 15 years. It's just, I've used now a tool that allows me to be this way to, you know, many different people all at once. And so I think for those of you as an agent, you know, especially if you want to grow a a relatively pretty good sized business, um, YouTube is an amazing tool to do it because you create a video one time, that thing lives on forever. You know, it's not just like, you know I mean? Trust me, I get it. TikTok, Instagram, love those tools as well, but it's not the same as YouTube. It just it's isn't. Not. Like, you know, I want to kind of open that up a little bit because you kind of changed my perspective on that because I was very big into tic- or TikTok. I was very big into Instagram, and I was we were laughing because I had told you that I spent like an embarrassingly long time making this thirty second reel, and then it fell flat on its face, and then I went and toured a home, and then you know made a video, and it got thousands and thousands of views, and it really changed my perspective because. 
Uh, at one point in time, I'd asked you something about like um, uh, tracking your taxes for your biz or not tax, your receipts. And you sent me a video that you've made years ago. And you said, hey, listen, you know, like this, this is like an older video, but everything is still relevant. And I watched the entire video. Whereas let's fast forward, let's say five years. Like, I'm not going to say, hey, here's a funny video that I made on Instagram and it fell flat on its face, but it's still relevant, right? It was more or less just in the moment. So I think it's interesting to think that, you know, YouTube, there's still relevant information, even if you make that video years ago. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's awesome guys. And like, I mean, the coolest thing too, that I'll say about like working with YouTube leads is it's unlike any other kind of lead I've ever worked with in 15 years. Like, you know, I get on a zoom call or if I meet somebody in person for the very first time, they're like so excited. Like, it's like, I don't even have to sell myself, you know, I'm just like, they're like, Oh my God. Like, you know, like, oh, Kyle, I'm so excited to meet you. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a great feeling, right? Like versus trust me, I've done everything else. I've, you know, called for sale by odors. I've, you know, worked Google pay per click leads and all these other types of leads. And it's like, Oh my gosh, like, you know, like, like nails on a chalkboard, you're having to try and like sell yourself and like, they don't know who you are and you know, they're not loyal to you. It's just like, there's all these things. And so that's the cool thing about YouTube is like, you build this thing up, man. And it's a great business for you. So it's like, okay, so we've hyped up YouTube now real quick. I want to always, I always like to give some kind of actionable, you know, way to actually do it. Right. So like, you're like, okay, cool. I'm sold on YouTube. Maybe that's the one thing that I'm going to pull in go. And, and I want to do YouTube. Well, how do I get started? Um, well, you know, this one of course is a longer answer. There's not like a, you know, like a, a the short answer is, well, you just start creating content, right? But there's a lot more to it than that. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, you, you do, I think you have to try and keep it simple and get better over time. Like, you know, just like with as far as quality of your video, quality of your mic, quality of your, like that kind of stuff will get better. Um, you can start, you know, with your phone, you could start, like I started on Zoom. You go back to some of my first YouTube videos, there were just Zoom calls that I recorded, right? And like no fancy backgrounds, no fancy lighting, um, but I got started. That was the point. And, you know, and I was very intentional. Um, I came up with a plan uh, when I first started my YouTube channel of like, all right, well, hey, these are the things that I think people are interested in. Um, so let, you know, so I made a list of different things that like I wanted to create. And the way that I did that is I searched other people's YouTube channels and I was like, what gets traction? You know, like what videos are doing well on their channels? You know, like if somebody else was, you know, making real estate, uh, agent content, um, you know, like living in a certain city or living in a market or whatever, and they had 50 videos, well, what was their three to five that got the most views? Then I'd go to somebody else, right? In a whole different market. I'd be like, all right. So I started studying, like, and you could start to see, like, there's common themes, some common videos that start to do well. And I was like, well, these are the ones that I need to make. And so I was intentional about making them. And then I started to make them. And I've just always done that now. And I've done it now for three years. And eventually you have just a library of helpful stuff. And you start attracting people that want to work with you, not only because you're helpful, but because they get to see who you are, you know, people naturally will have tendencies to want to work with certain personality types. And, you know, once they see that, like, yeah, you're my, you're my type of person. It's so easy to get that lead and, uh, you know, start working with them. So, yeah, so that's a big thing. I think, you know, as far as getting started, the mechanics of it, you know, of course we've got a lot more training, um, you know, on my channel, there's a lot of other YouTube channels that you can go through that are more in depth with YouTube. And I would say, you know, certainly I don't want to undervalue those because that's where you need to go if, if you do want to make this big, um, but it's all out there. But the biggest thing is just that you're going to be consistent and, you know, keep going, like make a video a week or two videos a week if you can. Right. Like, I think that's, that's a huge thing. You know, even in the beginning, like my biggest goal, honestly, was like, how quickly can I get to 50 videos? Like that was like my initial thought. Right. So I was just making videos as quickly as I could. I didn't want to make them bad, but at the same time, I also wasn't concerned with like, well, are they the best? Right. Like now I'm more like every day, I'm just trying to get better and better. Um, but the old, overall goal is just to get as much content out there and start getting in the routine of producing. So real quick, Blake, what do we have? We have something uh, going across the, the bottom here. I wanted to kind of touch on real quick um, for, for those of you that are seeing this uh, agent flight Academy and you see what I'm wearing, you see what Blake's wearing. We'll talk more about this later uh, in the call. Yeah. But if you like what Blake and I are doing right now, as far as like just some of the stuff we're talking about, he and I have the, the designed a course all the way from the ground up. It's not like 
old YouTube videos put together. Like literally it's just videos that he and I have now made um, for new agents. So this is called Flight 101 for brand new agents um, that really you know gives you an amazing overview um, of the real estate business. And then we go into depth on three different types of lead sources. We talk about getting organized in your business, setting up your business, your branding, your marketing, advertising, talk about listings, talk about working with buyers. Um, it's all in there, guys. It's over 10 hours worth of content. It launches November 1st. So that's oh, yeah. what, a little less than a week away. That's right. And uh, in the party, if you guys are interested in joining virtually to, yeah. you know, come celebrate with Kyle and I, but like he said, it is a, uh, a jam packed uh, session. Uh, it, 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 yep. We're calling them flights, right? So, like modules where agents can learn so much, uh, not only from the experiences that we've learned, but this is kind of like what you should learn in 12 months. We've condensed into 12 hours just for this specific flight. And then we will then start to make more flights uh, kind of geared to more seasoned agents to kind of find craft. Uh, or fine tuning your, your craft of real estate. So that's right. Yeah. So if you go to agentflightacademy.com right now, we're in pre order. So it'll launch November 1st. But if you buy it before November 1st, you actually are, we're given 50% off just because we want to get people in the course using it, kind of learning from it and getting their feedback from it. And oh, so yeah. it's normally going to be 300 bucks. It's like $150, which guys, I'm telling you, it's a steal, like for all the content that's in it. Plus we've got over like 25 downloadable resources that you're going to get. So like buyer presentation, listing presentation, scripts, like all of these different like assignments and worksheets that you can do. Um, so it's really cool. We put a lot of effort into it. So I definitely would say go check that out. If you're not convinced, if you want a preview of it before you actually buy, um, like Blake said, uh, you can come to our launch party, which is next Tuesday evening at seven o'clock. We're going to kind of take you behind the scenes, kind of show you some of the stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be uh, at agentflightacademy.com forward slash launch. So if you go there, you can sign up for the webinar and actually check that out. But if you're like, Dude, I don't need any introduction. I just want to go buy the thing and have it ready to go get my 50% off. Just go to agentflightacademy.com and you can get it today. So, yeah. all right, moving on, moving on. So what is your next source, Mr. Blake Sammons? Okay, so I'm going to kind of cheat a little bit here because uh, I'm going to say two birds, one stone, if you will. So um, I, I kind of piggybacked on this when I was talking about my Google PPC and getting reviews. And so what I'll do with my reviews uh, that I get on Google is I will utilize that for not only social media content, but I spend a lot of time building rapport, getting to know my clients really well. And so I build these great friendships with them. So I publicize not only I, I, the reviews that I get, but I spend an extra amount of time publicizing on social media. So I guess I guess what I'm trying to say is social media, uh, but I publicize the relationship that I create with my clients versus like, hey, look at this great review. You know, so like, for example, um, the most recent closing that I had, uh, you know, we um, they, they had to bring their daughter to the closing table and they said, is that OK? And I said, not only is it OK, I'm going to bring both of my daughters with me. And we made this like a fun closing. We had coloring books and the girls were, you know, playing and playing under the table and so i took some silly pictures and funny things and like i will emphasize that on my social media to just show you know like this is the kind of environment that i create with my with my people you know and like now they're my friends and so i'll use the social media as marketing advertising to really boost the relationship that i create with my clients so i would say twofold right like i, I lean into my um the relationships that I build and I lean into, I guess, my sphere. And then I also kind of build a greater awareness from social media. And I just happen to do it in a humorous way, but it brings leads directly to me and people you know, ask questions and it's just a matter of following through with them and then treating them the same way that I treat, you know, all of my clients. So Awesome. Um, that's kind of a two part answer. I cheated. Sorry. <laughs> I love it. Well, then I'm going to ask you a couple follow up questions into that because lay it uh, on me. Yeah. I, I, I just, I love what you do on social media. I actually, you know, f like I, I'm always trying to improve my social media because for me, in my mind, I always view like YouTube as different than social media. I know some people are like, well, YouTube is social media and maybe it is in some, some ways. 
Um, but for me, I'm like, okay, I'm good on YouTube, but I'm not good on social media. Even though some people think that it's like, well, you got all these followers and stuff. Yeah, but I don't really do a lot on, I know I could do a much better job of it, sure. but like moving forward into like, you know, the, the, the later part of this year, early parts of next year, you know, I know that you, you've got Instagram, you got Facebook, TikTok, are you, are you on? Are you I am on TikTok, but I, I'm not like the best TikToker. Uh, I will say that I just kind of like make similar videos or uh, make similar content with the same video. So I'll, I'll take the, I'll record the video onto my phone and then be able to use it in two different places. And I'll make a different version of what I've made on Instagram. So Instagram is really where I lean into the most. Okay. Uh, yeah. Sorry. I interrupted you there. No, that's okay. So, so then let's say Instagram or, you know, and it could be any of these platforms, but like, all right, so now what you're talking about, I just want to like kind of see what the whole funnel looks like all the way through. Right. So you get these, you know, obviously you have to have people on your Instagram or on your Facebook or wherever it is in order for them to even see what you're posting. Right. But then what does that whole process looks like? They see your post, they DM you or they message you sure. and, and you, you know, follow up and you, you want to work with them. I'm assuming that's kind of what, what that looks looks like right so here's yeah yeah so I, I would say um great example i posted a video about how i'm kind of the i've built myself a niche of being the fun and stress-free realtor here in charleston and i utilize a lot of humor to kind of build rapport break down walls and get to know my clients really well and so i had this video of me um dancing and in uh, one of my one of my showings and i happen to be dancing on top of an island need to hear more there but <laughs> You know, someone said that it was really funny and I wish that, you know, you were, you were, um, you were my realtor. And then she sent me a message and then she said, Hey, you know, I'm interested in learning, you know, I, I'm a first time home buyer. I'm interested in learning more. And I said, that's perfect because I'm actually, you know, previous teacher and, you know, I have a system set up actually that you showed me, which is Calendly. And like, I was able to say, Hey, listen, here's my Calendly, like find a time that works best for your schedule and you can put, put it on my schedule and I will. Uh, meet you there or meet you on Zoom and we will go through all the questions and have a buyer consultation and make sure you have the right foundation for moving forward as a buyer. And so this particular client found me through just a random reel where I was dancing, being silly, then reached out to me and we were texting or I should say messaging back and forth through Messenger. Then she found a time on my calendar, scheduled a buyer consultation so you have to have a pre-organized you know meeting where it says buyer consultation and then you know my my cal calendly reminded her of the meeting we came to the zoom meeting i i did a buyer consultation she signed a buyer's agency on the spot and she's going to purchase here in the spring and like now we are in the process of looking at you know virtually houses and kind of getting more information and going further down that pipeline but that's the way the process typically works for me is like, I will get to know people through humor and then they'll ask me questions and I have to really back that up with experience and knowledge. So then let me ask you then, so that's, you know, middle and the bottom of the funnel. How are you getting more people in the top of your social media funnel? Yeah. So I'd say how I'm, I guess going beyond my sphere of influence is really, it comes down to on Instagram, I think hashtags and then your how much you're posting and i would say reels reels really reels really reels grow your business beyond belief and like there was a challenge that i entered into and it was like 30 days 30 reels and when you hear this and if you're not on instagram you might be like oh that's not hard at all but like it was crazy oh, hard 30 days 30 reels and um it grows your business exponentially because people are just seeing your videos and granted sometimes they're just kind of like scrolling through and they don't you know, they don't click the heart, they don't comment, they don't see anything, but you have to keep putting out content for someone to accidentally see that video of you dancing and then think, oh man, I want that relationship with my realtor. Or like, if you go to my social media, you'll see a video of me icing one of my clients. Yes, icing, like a Smirnoff ice. Like when we closed it, I left a Smirnoff ice in the refrigerator. It was absolutely hilarious. I got a text and a video later, really funny. But that's the type of relationship I build with my clients. And I emphasize that on my social media. And then when other people see that, they, I, I, for lack of a better term, they have FOMO. You know, like yeah. they want, they want the relationship that I've developed with my clients. So, um, 
I feel like I accidentally expanded too much there, but no, no, you're good. So now do you use any tools or anything like that, that help you with social media specifically, like either scheduling tools or like things to increase like the, you know, effectiveness of them. So I'll, I'll use the, um, creator studio to make posts of like pictures or things that are maybe more like regimen, you know, like regimen. So like, um, if I have something that I do on Mondays specifically or Wednesdays or Tuesdays or Thursdays, whatever it might be, I'll post some of those things, but the reels, it has to be very like, um, done. You have, you have to do it in Instagram. There's no like pre necessarily pre planning for that. Uh, I will say probably the best tool that I have that I carry with me and just have it in my backpack is the tripod. Cause like, you never know when you're going to walk into a house that has an epic shower and like, <laughs> you're like, gosh, you know what? I could just take a quick video. Like my phone's right here. I could just like take a quick video of like the shower. Like how cool is this? But like, what really makes a difference is when you turn the phone around, you record me in the shower, you know, like, Right. So now I'm like, look at this awesome shower. But for me and my brand, it's all about humor. So like, I'm going to grab that shower wand and I'm going to sing, you know, like, don't stop. <laughs> right. So like, <laughs> I'm going to put that kind of video out there of like me singing in the shower. Cause in my mind, I want to work with that guy. And like, I might miss some people, but the people that I do catch, we, we create a really tight bond. Guys, we got to get a thumbs up or give it a heart if you're watching this for Blake's, uh, you know, singing ability. Don't stop believing. On, on camera, on, <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, yes, yeah. Let's hear it for Blake, guys. Yeah, if you, if right. you're getting, if you're getting value out of that video right there, out of this video, then uh, make sure you're hitting that like button. Here we go. I have to start singing more often and pick some better songs. So I like it. Well, we had a question uh, about a coupon code for the fifty percent off. Um, it's two ninety seven. You're right. There is a coupon code. It is. Uh, launch L A U N C H launch. Use Does it have that to be in all caps. Uh, I don't think it's got to be, uh, you know, in all caps, but I don't know. I think that's how it's set up, but uh, let, that's how it's written on the uh, page, but should work both ways. Yeah. All right. Uh, look at this. Someone says strong work. Hey, Brent says karaoke Tuesday. Oh, look yeah, baby. I'll see you there, Brent. <laughs> I love it. Damon Smart Wash hands. <laughs> <Love> <laughs> Got a lot. We got some thumbs up here. Look at that. everybody likes your singing. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to do some more. Of that. <clears throat> yeah, I'm gonna have to like really you know, like get it, get it together. Yeah. Uh, well, real quick, one of the things I want to talk about for social media because social media again, very broad term, right? So if you're like even that one thing, I think you almost have to like condense down if that's gonna be your focus for you know this next quarter, this next year or whatever. Um, I think you gotta like really even get more honed in than that. Um, one of the ways that I feel that I have built my business here most recently on social media, kind of, you know, in addition to my YouTube channel, um, is my Facebook group, you know, building a community. That's another thing. Like when you say social media, a lot of times we naturally will just think, what are you posting on your profile? Like, what is it, your stories? What are your reels? Like, what's your grid posts? But no, like, I think one of the most underutilized underappreciated tools of social media is still the Facebook group. I think that, you know, especially when it comes to adding value to people, mm -hmm. if you can create an amazing community in your area and you're the leader of that community, um, that adds, uh, that has, has a lot of opportunity um, for you to get deals that way. Right. And um, so, you know, I think, you know, creating a group, whether it's a niche group, like for a certain, you know, maybe it's, you know, for, for, um, you know, single mothers, maybe it's, you know, for military, maybe yeah. it's for moving to the city, you know, yeah. Moving to the city. Yeah. New people moving to the city, right. It's a group just for that, right? Like yeah. whatever it is, you make a group about it, make it based on people that can, you know, buy in your area, um, but also niche it down beyond that and start collaborating, getting this community going. Yeah. And uh, it's going to take some work. Like I can tell you starting, you know, our group, which now like Blake and I, if you've been, if you're in the agent flight Academy, Facebook group, uh, you'll know we've made some big, uh, branding changes here recently, but yeah. that's a lot of work, right? Like we have to kind of, you know, post a lot of stuff. We got to be responding and engaging with people, but it's definitely proven, you know, worthwhile for me for like what I'm doing on this side of the business, but it also is proving worthwhile for a lot of agents on the sales side of the business as well. Um, because you're basically making yourself like the mayor of that little like niche, right? Like you are, you can, you have the ability to stand up a group, make it be seen, make people want to be a part of it. Um, and then when they're ready to buy a house, 
they, uh, you know, they're ready to buy it with you. See, cause that's the thing is like a lot of times we all assume that we've got to make a group about real estate. No, yeah. like if you want to just make it around your niche or your hobby or whatever, but you're leading the charge on it, people will eventually know that you're a real estate agent, right? Like you can yeah. kind of throw some stuff in there, here and there. They're going to look up who the, you know, who the, the top person is, you know, the admins, they're going to, you know, click on your profile. People will find you if you build a good community and that can really uh, help out as well. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Great point, man. So what would you say is your last, uh, your last I guess, lead resource that you're really leaning into here. So, yeah, man. Well, I don't think, I mean, it, I, I get a lot of comments or a lot of people uh, afterwards that would be like throwing tomatoes at me if I didn't say this one, but it's gotta be, you gotta go to your sphere of influence. Like yeah. if you, you know, like this is definitely the time that if you have undervalued or if you've like underutilized going after and, and really, you know, building key relationships with your sphere of influence, um, now is the time more than ever to really start to, you know, to do that big. Um, Absolutely. when I say big, I mean, like do it like you've never done it before, right? Like, like oh, yeah. do things that you've never done. Um, so maybe you've texted people, maybe you're friending them on Facebook and you're sending messages. Maybe you're calling them here and there once in a while. That's all great, but you are not you know, maximizing it, right? Maximizing yeah. it. And I know you'll have a couple pointers in here, Blake, as far as like maximizing your sphere of influence, but just like some of the ideas that I have in mind are like, you know, events, right? Like, are you doing events right. like strategic events, whether it's quarterly, whether it's monthly, but are you doing events that you're inviting your entire sphere of influence to, right? Like that's a huge thing. Um, it could be an educational event, right? Like you could pick up you know, people that are not yet, um, you know, in your sphere of influence, but you also can invite your sphere of influence uh, to, to educational events. So yeah. it's a first time home buyer seminar, maybe it's a new construction seminar, maybe it's a how to sell your house seminar, whatever it is, right? Like you, you go and you, you host it and you invite your sphere of influence to it. You invite people who are not in your sphere of influence to it. Maybe it's just a happy hour, right? And you're just, you know, kind of just mingling with, with your sphere of influence and you're, you're building that community within your sphere of influence. Absolutely. Or just, or just a, like a thank you event for some of the clients that you've closed, you know, just networking there because then you'll, you can, you know, create some handshakes between some of your clients and make other things happen, right. For other people. So I think that's really big too, but yeah, you're absolutely right. I think creating events, leaning into your sphere, I think really going deep here in the sense of, you know, kind of going beyond what the call of duty is and kind of being creative, you know? So like, um, I think you, we're coming up to the season, uh, dare I say of pop buys, you know, like there's so many great pop buys you can do for your clients. And that is legitimately reinvesting in your sphere of influence, because if you sold these people house, let's say nine, 10 months ago, and you accidentally fell out of touch with them, great time to just drop off a pumpkin on their porch or, um, you know, we drop off something for Thanksgiving. Um, uh, we've got Christmas coming up too. So like, there's so many holidays and different things that you can drop something off for a pop by and kind of reinitiate that conversation and then pull, pour back into your sphere of influence. So yeah, couldn't agree. Yeah. With you. Yeah, this, I mean, that you nailed on the head. I mean, with so many holidays coming up right now, guys, I mean, yes, there's going to be a lot of events that people are already going to be going to, but at the same time, you need to make sure that you have one of those events that people are coming to. And because of that, you got to get strategic. You got to get on the ball now. Like if you're going to do a Christmas event, you need to have that thing like plan, get it start, you know, going out because people are going to start making, you know, their schedule like, Hey, like we've already got a Christmas party that night, or we already got a, you know, whatever this time. Like, so really you want to start planning that setting, you know, planting the seed, inviting people to it. And so you got to realize that like, we are coming into a really opportune time for your sphere of influence. We're also coming into a very busy time. So you need to make sure that you're strategic about what you're doing. Pop by gifts are amazing right now. There's so many different little ideas. If you don't know what a pop by gift is, like you want, you want to explain real quick, like a, yeah. like a, like a, what it, what it is. You don't have to give an example, but just like, what is a pop? Oh, I've got a great example. And I think, you know, the one I'm going to say too. Um, so, uh, we, we have a friend shout out Amy Cotney. If you guys don't know her, um, look her up sweet home. Auburn AL is her Instagram handle. She is hilarious, but she's got this great pop by. Uh, and a pop by is really exactly what it sounds like. 
you are popping by your client or potential client or your sphere of influence, their house, right? You're literally just stopping in. And I think what's important is that you call, text, email, communicate with them. Hey, I, I've got something, a surprise, want to drop off for you guys. When are you going to be home? I think having them be home is the important because that's where like conversations expand and things happen. And they're like, you know what? Actually, I was talking to my neighbor the other day, like right over there. And he was saying that they're thinking about selling their house too. And like that wouldn't happen if you just stopped by and dropped something off on their porch. It's important to pop by in a time when they are potentially going to be there, right? But investing some money in something very small little but that shows your intention about why you're stopping by and like for thanksgiving there's a hilarious one that our good friend amy does and it's called a uh, turkey poop and it's quite literally like a trail mix or a bag of trail mix with a bunch of different like sweet treats in it um and then she puts prints off a little sticker and it has the turkey on it and the turkey looks funny and it says you know turkey poop in the recipe and what's in it and she literally will say hey i've got you know i've stop by and a turkey pooped on your you know doorstep and she's got her business card you know stapled to the bag and you know that won't necessarily transpire into a hey amy thanks for the turkey poop i want to sell my house like that's not how it works how it works is in the spring when they say gosh you know what we really want to capitalize on all this equity we've built in this home uh what was that girl's name uh that dropped off the turkey poop or you know what remember when amy dropped that off that was hilarious let's work with her let's give her a call like that's how investing in your sphere works and how popeyes work is you got to invest now and plant those seeds so that way they will grow uh in the future and you guys can kind of harvest some of your hard work from your sphere in the spring Awesome. Yeah. And one thing too, I want to talk about because you might be thinking, well, yeah, you know, I want to do all of these things, but I haven't even sold a house. Like money's tight. We're going into the holidays. I don't have extra money to be spending. Here's the thing too, that you got to sometimes got to get creative and you also can partner, right? Like there's a lot of opportunity even with events and with like things that you're going to be handing out or passing out to people for you to like partner with, uh, with, with, you know, a lender a title company, your home inspector, you know, somebody who you give business to, it's not, you know, bad to ask like, Hey, I have this idea. Would you be willing to go in with me? You know, and obviously, you know, I will, will, you know, market you, you can come to the event if it's like an event type of a thing, um, but get some buy-in. So you're not having to do all of this in front of the money yourself. Right. Um, so like a lot of every time that I ever had an event, whether it was a client appreciation event, whether it's an, you know, like a, like a happy hour that I do, uh, for my clients, you know, quarterly, if it's anything like that, I always will have some sponsors and sometimes multiple ones. Like I usually don't come out of pocket at all, or, you know, I might have to come with a little bit, right? Yeah. So you can do an event. That's a thousand dollar event, a $2,000, $3,000 event, and sometimes not have to spend any of your own money. Um, so it, so don't let that be a limiting belief or like a thing like, well, I can't do this cause I don't have that. No, you got to think, how can I do this? Right. Yeah. Find a way um and make it happen so absolutely there, there's um, lots of ways guys so many ways yeah so you know so that's one that's that's you know events pop buys we've said phone calls direct mail getting like cards in the mail like handwritten mail you know if you can do handwritten that's great if you've got a big sphere of influence and you're like i can't i can't do handwritten then you know then you can even do like something like uh, i've used uh i use send out cards you know those of you that use send out cards but um, i use send out cards and that's well received you can even send like little treats with your send out cards so you can send like brownies you can send you know if you want to send books or whatever you want to send like for gifts so like that's what i do around the holiday time frame is i've got my database in there and i even kind of rank my database to where i've got my top 25 and my top 25 get a pretty nice gift during christmas season and it's all done you know through send out cards so that's actually really nice um, and then of course everybody else in my database at least gets a card uh, from me so that's important and i do personalize it like i'll put stuff about me my family you know because that's you know i, I don't know sometimes i think you know i'm I try not to be as salesy as, you know, as I think sometimes people try to be, I try and make it like you said, Blake, make it fun, like make it, you know, still be professional and have that, that, you know, where people know what you do, but at the same time now, I think people like the, usually the first, the first thing that like people will ask me when I like meet with them, like client or even just an agent 
you know, they are like, so how's Chrissy doing? How are the kids doing? Like literally that's like the first, they, they don't want to know about me. They want to know about my family. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and that's what I want. Like I want to convey that to people. And oh, so absolutely. don't hide that, you know, I think that's why people wear a name tag, right? They want, yep. they want, you want yep. to know their name immediately right off the bat. So yeah, I totally agree, man. Yeah. My kids, they'll help me deliver pot buys. You know, they help me make the pot buys. Yeah. Like, and Listen, if, if you're doing this, I'm going to go down this rabbit hole. Like if, if I'm Kyle and, and or me and I'm delivering pot buys, my kids are doing it. Like I'm going to record that and publicize it yeah. like on Instagram and, and on Facebook and show that. Cause now I'm doubling down things or, you know, so like, yeah right now what we're doing is a, a bunch of boo baskets so you know you, you baskets, might yeah. do a boo basket for like your neighbors which mm -hmm. you know that's cool but if you're a real estate agent why not do it for like everybody and now granted the, the idea of the boo basket is like you don't want them to know who did it so i kind of do kind of cheat on that a little bit oh, you know what i've got one booms. for you that's a little bit different is uh right. this one's purely for the moms and dads and that that you're going to give a gift to the moms and dads of the neighborhood is uh you've been boozed. Oh yeah. The booze basket. There you go. <laughs> Absolutely. Been boozed. Yeah. Yes. yes. That's, I mean, that's a pop by basically, right guys. Pop -by, yeah. Yep. But I mean, all of those, like even the resources that you use to make those, like ask a lender, like, Hey, would you be willing to, you know, split the cost on this stuff? I'll throw your card in there with my card. Right. Hey, and go um, to a local brewery, see if you can snag some, yeah. uh, a, a six pack of beer at a discounted price and say like, yeah. Hey, listen, I'm going to give these to, you know, the first 10 houses in my neighborhood, you know, yeah. like yeah. be Perfect. creative. Perfect. I love it. All right, guys. Well, Hey, those are four sources for you to kind of really hone in on and pick, um, as far as, you know, uh, having success, even in this market. Cause trust me guys, Absolutely. that's the thing. It starts with your mindset. Like I said, at the beginning of the call, somebody's going to get business. Like houses are still going to be sold between now and the end of the year and all the way through 20, 2023, but who's going to be the one to get those sales. It's gotta be you. You gotta, you gotta shift your mindset. You gotta think, how do I go do it? Um, and then start making it happen. It does start sometimes by doing less, like if you're doing too much right now, maybe you need to do less. These four sources are key. I mean, I, I, I know a lot of different sources and yeah. these are the four that I'm focused on. These are the four that I'm preaching and talking to people about and telling you need to do these uh, right now. I, um, I'd be curious if uh, there's been a lot of activity in the comments. I'd be curious if anybody's got some that we didn't mention that they want to throw up in the comments in there just for a quick conversational point, um, yeah. you know, yeah. just well, for a quick chat. And yeah. while that's happening, I do see that bear is laying back there in the in the video there. You see that? Oh yeah, you, yeah, Mr. Yeah. Bear right there. Sometimes he joins me, uh, you know, and uh, other times I have to get him out of the room because he's, uh, you know, right now he's he's tired. But other times he'll just like come up to me and won't leave me alone. So, but yeah, right now he's. Uh, I take him for bike rides. So for those of you all that follow me on social, I've got an electric bike, and uh, literally I will take Bear for bike rides. And it exhausts him. So that is that is bare right now. So, but I love it. Well, very cool. Yeah, I don't. I'm seeing them. If you've got anything in the comments that uh, you know questions, any lead source stuff, you know, feel free to throw it in there. We can stick around for another minute or two. Yeah, um, like if you guys had anything that really worked that we didn't mention already, like go ahead and shout it out. Yeah. Uh, especially like in Hawaii, I saw Puerto Rico jump up. Puerto Rico's in here. Yeah. Well, let me see. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Diana. Yeah. We got Diana from Puerto Rico. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. What's working in your neck of the woods. Hey, real quick too, while we're waiting for some of those responses, uh, I want to shout out George Jensen, George Jensen. He went and picked up, uh, agent flight Academy already. So that is uh kudos to yeah, you, man. George. I think Way to uh, go, man. for those it's that missed awesome. it, if, if you weren't here earlier, uh, we did talk about Blake and I's course that we launched November 1st. It's on pre-order right now. If you go to agentflightacademy.com, you can pick it up for 50% off. Use the coupon code LAUNCH. And it's over 10 hours worth of material created just for this course. Blake and I sat down and made it. And uh, and literally, it, we also have 25 downloadable resources that you can use. Um, their buyer presentation, our listing presentation, all sorts of different scripts, um, different like worksheets and things like that. Uh, feedback. Oh, yeah. Templates, templates, things you can send, templates, uh, yep. ideas. It, it's uh, a that our, our dad joke humor is in there. So yeah, I mean, you know, 
Yep. So many yeah. great things. And I might sing. I might sing. There, oh, watch <laughs> out. Watch out. Now we're going to get a lot more signups there. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I love it. Yeah. So if you want, go check that out. Agentflightacademy.com. Um, if you want to see the back end of it before you actually go purchase, go to agentflightacademy.com forward slash launch and join us for our launch party next Tuesday um, at seven o'clock. Yep. Um, but if you're ready to just go buy it and get the discount right now, there's your site. Scroll on across the bottom. Use the code launch. All right. I don't see any questions, Blake. I think we did such a good job of answering we all, everything. Man. We covered it all. And so everybody's good to go. Um, but we've got Steve. Uh, shout you out. We got uh, from Brooklyn. Love it. Good to see you, Steve. All right. Thanks so much, Blake. Perfect. Well, thank you all, everybody, for tuning in. I hope you have an amazing week. Blake, thank you so much for jumping on. I'll be talking to you here soon. Yes, and uh, yeah, if you got anything, reach out to either Blake or myself on the socials. Yep. Uh, I know I'm always active, most active on Instagram, my DMs. That's the best way to get a hold of me. Uh, I know Blake is the same way. So there we go. All right, guys. Have a great one. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.